MPs have concluded the UK's withdrawal from Afghanistan last August was a disaster and a betrayal of British allies. The report by the Cross-Party Foreign Affairs Committee has called on the Foreign Office's top civil servant to resign. It found the Foreign Office failed to make necessary preparations for withdrawal, mismanagement of the evacuation in a crucial period likely cost hundreds of people their chance to leave the country and as a result likely cost lives and the withdrawal has heightened the terror threat from Afghanistan. Well, the government has responded uh, today, saying staff worked tirelessly to evacuate more than 15,000 people from Afghanistan in a fortnight. For reaction, I'm joined by Ash Alexander-Cooper, a former British Army colonel, and by Dr Neelam Rainier, associate professor from Middlesex University. Welcome both. Uh, what do you, first of all, Neelam, make of those findings? I think those findings are absolutely correct and true. They are damning, but they're absolutely true. So the reporters uh, called for the resignation of this um, top civil servant. Uh, Boris Johnson in the last hour has backed that top civil servant. What is your reaction to the findings in that, in that call? Well, I echo what Nina said. I mean, nothing surprises us that was written in the report. And we're grateful that it's been published and it, its candour and its honesty. Unfortunately, it doesn't really do much to change the situation on the ground for those left behind. And there are many who have actually already been murdered and tortured as a, as a result of being left behind um, and many thousands more who are still waiting to hear what will happen to help them get out as we promised to do. No surprise you say, were you surprised at the lack of preparation for this in terms of this is a, something that you would expect presumably would be planned for if the situation would arise? One would have expected it not to have been such a last minute dash. You know, we all saw the chaotic scenes, the tragic scenes at the airport with people just, you know, it, it, was, it was terrible to see it all unfold the way it did. Um, so absolutely, we could have done more more early, I think, you know, earlier in the, in the, in the process. Neela, and what of those uh, left behind now? What, what's the current situation for anybody who didn't make it out nine months ago? The current situation has a gender divide here. The, those who are still able to get out of their houses and have passports and have the money to do COVID tests and have survived the food crisis are still waiting to get out of the country legally into Pakistan or into Iran and then leave from there. But the UK government is doing nothing to help them get here. Those who are women and children and other minority groups who have now been locked by the Taliban inside their homes have no chance. There is no way they can get out of home. There is no way they can get a passport renewed or a visa issued or travel with their little children mm. across an international border with the hope and the money to be able to come to the UK, which is where they were supposed to be, as the government announced all those fantastic, fabulous new schemes to rescue the Afghans, none of which work. The ACR scheme that is apparently open right now is not open to applications, works on referrals only. The UK government's website says that UNHCR will do referrals to those who can get to UNHCR. UNHCR's website says we will not do any referrals for any resettlement programs for any international organisations. So. And the ever-changing situation there is leading, according to this report, to a greater threat yes. of terrorism here. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, while our eyes are, are turned away from Afghanistan, you know, the Taliban and, and ISIS and others are regrouping and, and gaining more confidence. Um, just to echo or to reinforce what Nina was saying, you know, those... Uh, women who could no longer leave their houses, many of them are on their own now anyway because their husbands and brothers and, and the male members of the family are in hiding. Mm. And, and I've got examples of families that I've been trying to support where you know, that male member has now been found and they've been tortured and some are lucky to be, to be alive, but they've been told very clearly that this is a warning and many of these attacks are as punishment for the other members of the family that we were able to get out. So the situation is pretty dire mm. and there's no solution at the moment that and, the government's on, really articulating. And ongoing. Ash and uh, Neelam, thank you very much uh, for coming in to talk to me about the uh, latest situation. Thank you.